welcome back. Today we're going to talk about a situation that doesn't come up very often, but when it does, it will always be the final key to unlocking the rest of that puzzle. This configuration has a funny but appropriate name. It is called a bug plus one. So let's go over to the puzzle board and see what this means and how it works. In Sudoku, the term bug is an acronym for bi-value universal grave or binary universal grave, whichever you prefer. And what this means is that if you had a situation when the puzzle is about 80 to 90% solved, where every remaining unsolved cell is a bi-value cell, and further, if every remaining candidate occurs exactly twice in any row, column, or block, then that would lead to multiple solutions, just like the forbidden UR pattern. And thus, this configuration cannot exist in a valid Sudoku puzzle. It is an impossibility. That's why it is called a bi-value universal grave, or a bug. Bug meaning there is something wrong. It's a very clever name, in my opinion. As I said, a bug cannot exist in a valid Sudoku puzzle. So what you may find instead is that you have something that looks almost like a bug with nearly all bi-value cells remaining except for one cell that contains three candidates. And then you need to check and see if one of those three candidates appears exactly three times in either the row, the column, or the block in which it lies. If so, then you have a bug plus one, and the candidate that appears three times in at least one house must be set in that cell to avoid the bug. Simple, right? It really is simple. Let me show you how this works, and then I will show you why it works. So when you see that you have all bi-value cells left except for one cell with three candidates, you must perform what we will call the test. And the test is this. Let's call the cell with three candidates the target cell. Here in this diagram, it is R3C9. That is our target cell. This is the only cell in this puzzle that has three candidates. All the other cells are bi-value cells. Once you have identified this situation, then check the row, the column, and the block containing the target cell, and make sure that every candidate appears exactly twice in all three of those houses except for one of the three candidates in the target cell. And if that candidate appears exactly three times in all three of those houses, then that passes the test and you have a true bug plus one. The extra instance of that candidate is the plus one. It's a bug plus one extra candidate. So let's count the candidates in each row, column, and block containing the target cell. So in row three, we've got two nines, and we've got two sevens, we've got two eights, we've got two threes, but there are three ones. Okay, there are three ones. So now let's check the column. We've got two threes, and we've got two sevens, and again, we've got three ones. Okay, so this is exactly what you wanna look for. Now let's check the block. And in the block, we've got two threes, we've got two eights, we've got two sevens, and again, we've got three ones. And if you have a true bug plus one like we have here, then the candidate that appears three times in at least one of those houses will be the solution to that target cell, leaving nothing but naked singles left to fill in and the puzzle will be solved. It's a beautiful thing. If it does not pass the test, then you are missing something and you need to study the position further to see what other solving technique might be available. It could be a false bug plus one if it does not pass the test, which I will demonstrate in just a minute. On a side note, when you have a real bug plus one, if it passes the test in one house, it will pass the test in all three houses. You really only need to check one house. All other candidates will appear twice, except for that one candidate that will appear three times in each house, just like you saw here in this diagram. 
I like to check two houses just to make sure my eyes are not playing tricks on me. I usually check the row and the column. But like I said, if it passes the test in just one house, that's enough. For instance, you could just check the block if you want. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, that third candidate in the target cell must be placed to avoid the impossible and invalid bug configuration. Because if that candidate was false, you would have a bug which is not allowed. Like if this candidate one was not there, this would be a bug. All candidates appear twice in every row, column, and block. It is impossible in a valid puzzle. That, all by itself, should be proof enough for the logic of this technique. But just for fun, let's see what happens if we try to solve the target cell for one of the other two candidates in that cell, i.e. one of the candidates that appears only twice in the row, column, and block of the target cell. So let's get rid of these colors. All right, so let's see what happens if we try to solve the target cell for three. Let's put a three in there. So now we've got a naked single here and here and here. We've got some naked singles down here. Fill them in. Fill that naked single in. Those are all naked singles. Then up here, we've got a naked single and a naked single and a naked single. But look what's happening. We've got two cells with no candidates in them. So putting a three in that target cell leads to an impossible situation where there is no candidate possible for row one, column four, or row three, column three. Now let's solve that cell for seven. If we put a seven in there, now we've got naked singles up here again, naked singles down here, naked singles here, 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 and here. And again, we end up with two cells with absolutely no candidates in them. That is impossible. So that shows that your premise is false, which means your target cell cannot be seven or three. It can only be solved for one. And when you do that, now the puzzle will solve itself, as you will see. So see, that worked out perfectly when we solved that cell for one. But be careful. Don't be fooled by something like this. Here in this puzzle, we have one cell that has three candidates and all the other cells are by-value cells. But let's perform the test. In row seven, we've got two candidate twos, two candidate threes, two candidate ones. We've got two candidate fours and two candidate sixes, and we've got three nines, okay? So at first glance, that looks like this might work. But if you notice, the nine does not appear in the target cell. We need the candidate that appears three times to be in the target cell. So now let's look in the column, and we see it's the same thing. We've got two candidate twos. We've got two candidate sixes. We've got two candidate ones, two candidate fours two candidate fives, two candidate sevens, and then we've got three nines, but no nine lies in the target cell. And of course, the same thing will be true in the block. We've got two ones, two twos, two fours, two sixes, and two sevens, but we've got three nines, but none of the nines are in the target cell. So this is not a bug plus one. This is a false bug plus one, so you've got to make sure that your configuration passes the test that we went over earlier or else this is not going to work. In this case, you have to look for something else. All right, so that's how this works. It's pretty simple. So let's take a look at some real examples in some real puzzles. All right, here in this puzzle, we've got all by-value cells except for one cell with three candidates, and there's our target cell. So now we want to perform the test, and we want to look in the three houses that contain that target cell and see if one of those three candidates appears three times while all the others appear only twice. So first, let's look in the row, and we see we've got two threes, and two twos, and two eights, but three sevens. So that looks pretty good. So let's look in the column. We've got, again, two threes. We've got two fives, two fours, and two twos, but there are three sevens. And if you look in the block, you see it's the same thing. There are three sevens, two twos, and two threes. So this tells us that the seven is the solution to that cell and then the puzzle will be solved. Because if the seven were false, that would leave you with the forbidden bug pattern. So you can fill that in like that 
And now it's just going to be naked singles after that. The whole puzzle will be solved. Now we'll do this for this puzzle, but we won't do this on every puzzle for the rest of the examples. So whenever you find one of these, you know that this is going to be the move that unlocks the whole puzzle. Okay, let's go to the next one. All right, here in this puzzle, we've got all by value cells except for this cell right here with three candidates. So now let's check the row, the column, and the block. And we've got two eights, and we've got two nines, and two sevens. We've got two threes, and we've got three ones. Now this is really enough, but let's take a look at the other houses just to be sure. Okay, so in column nine, we've got two threes, We've got two sevens, and we've got three ones. So again, there are three ones, and every other candidate appears only twice. And in the block, we've got two eights, and two threes, and two sevens, and three ones. So we can solve this cell for one, and we know the rest of the puzzle is solved, but we don't have to go through it each time. So let's go to the next example. Okay, again, we've got all by value cells, except for one cell with three candidates, and there it is, there's your target cell. So let's look in the row, the column, and the block. And in the row, we've got two nines and two fives, and we've got three twos, okay? And then in the block, same thing. We've got two fives and two nines, and we've got three twos. And in the column, we've got two fives, two nines, and three twos. So we know we can solve that cell for two. Okay, let's go to the next one. All right, here in this puzzle, the target cell is up here in row one with three candidates. All the others have just two candidates. So now let's perform the test and let's look in row one and we've got two threes and we've got two twos. We've got two nines, two fives and three eights. Okay, so in the column, I'm sure we're gonna have three eights. We've got two ones, we've got two fives, two twos and two nines. So it's looking good for eight. So let's look in the block and they're already filled in. So we know the eight is the solution to that cell. And you can fill it in just like that and the rest of the puzzle will be solved. All right, next. Okay, here in this puzzle, our target cell is down here in block nine. It's the only cell in the whole puzzle with just three candidates. So we perform the test and we see in the row, we've got two threes and two ones and three fives. And really that's all you need but you can choose whatever you want. Like maybe you just want to look at the block. You've got three fives, two threes, and two ones. It's the same thing. So the five is going to be the solution to that cell and the rest of the puzzle is solved. All right, next one. Okay, here again, we've got all by value cells except for one cell with three candidates up here in block one. There's your target cell. And in the row, we've got two candidate twos, two candidate fours, two candidate sixes, two candidate fives, and three nines. So that's all you need. You can solve that cell for nine right now. Boom. All right, you know, these are really simple. The key is just being able to see them. So when you see you've got a lot of by value cells left near the end of the puzzle, that's when you want to start looking out for this. And all you have to do is perform the test and make sure that it's not a false bug plus one. Okay? All right, let's go to the next one. Okay, here our target cell is in block five with three candidates. And let's just look in the block and we see we've got three candidate eights, but there are only two twos and two fives. And we look in the row, there are also three candidate eights, two candidate nines, two candidate threes, and two candidate fives. So eight is our answer. So we can solve that cell for eight. All right, let's do one more. Okay, here our target cell is in block six with three candidates, one, seven, and six. And in the column, we've got two candidate ones, we've got two candidate sevens, and we've got three candidate sixes. So we know that six is the answer to that cell, and we can solve the rest of the puzzle. Just like that. Okay, that's going to do it for today. These are really simple. The only problem is they don't come up all that much. So let's go back outside and wrap it up. Thanks for watching. Okay, so that's a bug plus one. And you should be very happy whenever you see one because you'll immediately know that the puzzle is solved. 
So it's a good idea to always be on the lookout for them as you are entering the final stages of any puzzle. Just don't be fooled by a false bug plus one. Always perform the test and you will know if it is real or not. The bug plus one configuration is so easy to understand and identify that I don't think there is any need for an adjunct to this video. Agreed? Good. In the next three tutorials, we are going to learn about what are called wings. These are extremely common patterns that come up in nearly every puzzle you will ever work on. They are very compact and easy to find and all three types of the wings we will be covering are capable of producing multiple candidate eliminations at once. So I hope you will join me for those very interesting lessons. Until then, be well and be happy.